Please welcome the Chief Operating Officer, the Travel Corporation, Ula Hefel Bola and Tour Raider CEO Travis Pittman in discussion with SCIF Senior Travel Tech Editor, Sean O'Neill. pandemic was especially hard on the multi-day uh, itinerary based tour operator segment, uh, partly because of the start, stop, start, stop nature of the restrictions, which kind of made it difficult to stitch together inventory at the last minute. Also, you have the cross-border nature of your demand, you know, uh, your customers coming in. However, we're going to assume that that is going to be behind us. We're going to have a forward-looking conversation today about the opportunities in the multi-day sector, especially digitization uh, and the new focuses on experience. Uh, brings a lot of opportunity. Um, if you have any questions, if you're here or are watching us online, please use the questions in the app, and we'll get them towards them at the end. Um, Ula, I'd like to start with you, please. Um, last year, the chairman uh, and founder of uh, the Travel Corporation, Stanley Tolman. He unfortunately passed away, but before he did, he had a, a message about the opportunity uh, that's now facing the company. Uh, maybe could you tell the audience here about that? Absolutely. It's my, my pleasure, and thank you for having me here today, Sean. So, Mr. Stanley Tolman, our chairman and founder, who sadly passed away last September, was an incredible man and visionary, and he's really built TTC from, from the ground up over, over many, many decades. And throughout the pandemic, he really was our, our guiding light, ha having lived through so many crises before and, and always navigated them brilliantly. And in, in September, shortly before he passed away, he, his, you know, his message to, to the executive team was, TTC has always done come out stronger of a crisis. No matter what it was, we've always dealt with it, we've always, we've always survived it, but not only that, we've come out stronger. And as I look out into the world and, and what is ahead of us, I do believe post-pandemic, this will be the single biggest opportunity we have ever had. I'm going to be really sad, I'm not gonna be here for this, but please, team, make sure you don't miss it and you make, make the most out of it. Okay, well, let's build on that. What are, it's very inspiring. So what are some things that you guys have been doing in the past few years that are sort of innovative changes in your product, changes in your operation? Sure. Well, what haven't we changed, right? I think we all, <laughs> <laughs> we all, we're all thrown into the deep end dealing something that none of us had ever dealt with before. We'd all, you know, all of us have been in the industry for many years and you've, you know, we've had SARS and you've had 9-11, but, but nobody ever has had a crisis of, of this magnitude. And we were really forced to, to reevaluate everything, to, to look at, you know, let's start with our, our product offering. When we realized that um, Australians, for example, wouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon, we said, well, we ha have such a loyal following of past guests in Australia. Traditionally, they all love to travel to Europe with us. We know Europe isn't on the agenda for Australians anytime soon. What can we do? You know, why don't we bring them the tried and trusted inside vacations quality to Australia? And in, in normal times, we would have said, well, you know, it takes about a year to launch a new domestic product and put it all together and, and contract it and, and come, come up with a marketing plan. And we knew we didn't have that luxury of time. So, you know, we, we pulled together very quickly a domestic program, launched it in Australia, bringing the tried and trusted inside vacations quality to our very loyal Australian guests. We also expanded our, our, um, our North American domestic offering. We've always had a domestic offering there, but again, it was never a core focus. But obviously, given the changing landscape, it, it did, become, did become a core focus. We also looked at a group size. We've always had, you know, Inside vacations always had slightly smaller groups, the founder is slightly larger groups, but you know, the, the group size conversation came up consistently of customers asking, how big is the group that, that I'm going, going to be traveling in? So we, again, very quickly launched different group sizes, starting from small private groups where you can take over an existing departure and, and travel only you know, with a group of you know, 
12 plus, privatize your departure for your own travel bubble, or small group departures with a maximum of 24, or classic departures. Again, you know, something we normally, we would have planned out a long time in advance, and we just did it really quickly because we felt we, ne we, we needed to. Yeah, so, so it's, it's optional small size tours. So how long, do you think that's a, a trend that'll last beyond the pandemic? Is that something you're gonna keep in your product offering? I absolutely believe it is here to stay, and it's, you know, it's not a one size fits all. There is a customer for, for whom, it is irrelevant, right? They're very happy with our classic group size, but there is, there absolutely is a market for, for a smaller, more, more niche experiences. And I do think that is one of the trends that is, that is here to stay. And having the choice and having the flexibility is absolutely key. Well, if we were having this conversation, Ulo, about five years ago, I could imagine if I asked you, you know, why is it in the multi-day tour sector, it takes, you know, you can't really go beyond a year or two, a lot of the companies in order to offering their schedules and availability to, uh, uh, you would be able to give a very methodical, pragmatic reason of these are the reasons we can't do it. Uh, so, but you said like when you're putting together the uh, material for, Aus for Australia, you were able to sort of do it. So how, talk a little bit about the new agility. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Thanks, Sean. And, you know, in, in the past, as I said, we would have everything, we had a very set cycle in the year. I could tell you, in September, this is when we launch our new Europe offering for the following year. Mm -hmm. But in this new crazy world, everything was turned on its head, right? And, and we, we knew we had to find a way to come to market earlier. And it wasn't the question of, you know, can we do it? The question we asked ourselves was, how can we do it? And if you take that mindset and that approach, you find a way to make it happen, right? I'm not saying it was easy, but you know, if you put <laughs> the, the right people into the room and you, you're focused and determined to find a way to do it, you always will find a way. So we've now, across all of our TTC brands, we always have at least two years worth of trips on sale at, at any given time. And again, that is something that is here to stay. We're not going to revert back to our old ways. You know, we found different and more agile ways of working, and they will absolutely be with us for the long term. Fantastic. Well, Travis, to bring you into this conversation, so uh, if you talk to people in the multi-day, people who are investors or analysts who are not in the sector, and you're trying to explain the multi-day tour operator opportunity, what are some points of education that you sort of try to explain to them that they aren't always up to speed on? Yeah, I think it's uh, a key one is it ha hasn't always had the best rap. Uh, I think okay. uh, group, group travel and group you know, scheduled tours, and I think it's uh, getting through that and, and actually getting across that a lot of people take tours like and, and adventures. And so I think trying to get them to relate to, okay, someone wants to take a, a trip with 20 or 50 other people, people actually enjoy that. Like, they're not just changing that group. So I think that's been a bit of education for us. Uh, where they can understand it better is when you say, okay, would you like to go on a, a private safari or an uh, adventure uh, to, to Africa? with your family, and, and then they can start to picture it. Oh yeah, that's complex, that's hard to put together. How do I do all that? Uh, how do I get the logistics and all that kind of, so once you start to get into it, there is a bit more understanding. But um, I think also what's been great over the years that, that we've seen is the innovation that the tour operators have had to do. Uh, I think it's been, you know, the bad rap has been there, but they've had to innovate or else the customers just wouldn't want to book this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been really interesting to see how that's been evolving the smaller groups now, but also just how it's really focused around the experiences. Uh, and I think, you know, we talk about tours and activities, but our sector of multi-day is about, that's what it's all about, it's the experiences. Right. It's the hot air ballooning or the white water rafting or the wine tasting or all these different things. It's all done for you. You don't need to go to an app and go, what am I going to do today? And you've got someone holding your hand. So I think it's just education of that process uh, and actually people understanding in this new world as well, it's actually very simple. I don't have to think of, okay, what if I need to cancel? I've got my train, I've got my hotel, I've got this. You know, it's all in one, having one person to go to and, and actually deal with as well. So I think it's how you uh, get the communication of what we actually sell is, is, was key to investors understanding the space, actually. Okay. Yeah. I'm about, I'll, I'll call for a brief video to sort of illustrate one of your products, but experientially you have this new, some, you've developed a Wonder Woman uh, product. Maybe tell us a bit about that to capture. Sure, and, and just to augment what, um, what Travis just said, I mean, it really is all about the experiences. Mm -hmm. It's about you know, immersing you into the destinations and having those deep and rich experiences, whilst at the same time you don't need to worry about it you know we take all the complexity out of it we do all the hard work we've got the connections and you just show up and, and have a good time and I think in this world 
probably five years ago, you know, a lot of you know, intrepid travelers would have said, oh my God, I'm gonna get a higher car, I'm gonna drive around Europe, I'm gonna do this on my own. In this new world, I think things have shifted a little bit and the complexity that is out there, figuring out what do you need to do in this country, what are the regulations in that country, and the regulations are changing every minute, I really think that has shifted the mindset of, 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 a, of, of a lot of people. And we have heavily invested in, in our experiences. It's always been you know, front and center of, of what we do, but it, it really has come to the forefront uh, in, in, in recent years. And one of my passion projects are our Wonder Women journeys. Again, it, it comes from feedback from our guests saying we would love to have you know, an, an all-female trip. Can you put something like that together for us? So we did launch our Wonder Women journeys a couple of years ago. Timing-wise, it kind of <laughs> coincided with the beginning of COVID, so <laughs> obviously not, not ideal, but, but I wholeheartedly believe those journeys are incredible, you know, designed by women, for women, with meeting incredible, you know, women entrepreneurs in the destinations. And we've got a, a wonderful journey to, to Croatia, which will be traveling in, um, in June this year. And I think we've got a little video that we might be able to show. Yeah, let's, let's bring that video up, please. My friends at Insight Vacations recently launched something that is very close to my heart, their Wander Women Journeys, which have been created for women and by women with a goal of empowering women travelers on inclusive trips that celebrate women's successes around the world. I'm particularly excited about the Make Travel Matter experiences on Venice and the Croatia coast. Insight and their nonprofit Treadwright Foundation have worked with the United Nations to identify experiences that make a positive impact. It sounds very well put together um, as a good illustration. So Travis, you for many years at Tour Radar, you've had an online travel agency, you've helped about 2,400 tour operators market their, uh, their goods online. You are in November expanded your business model, uh, you're now going to the business to business, so tell us what you're going to be doing. Sure, yeah, no, so prior to COVID, uh, we were very much focused on B2C, uh, so actually getting the uh, multi-day tours and adventures sold online. Um, so we work with, yeah, I think 2,700 uh, and around 50,000 different adventures. And as the pandemic hit, we looked at, okay, what can we do to actually help the whole industry also come out of this stronger as well? Uh, and as part of that, maybe we can queue up the, uh, the ecosystem uh, diagram. We actually launched in November uh, what we call the adventure booking platform uh, and it's a, a category with both a b2c element which is our core business mm -hmm. uh, but also with a, a distribution piece so b2b so how can we get these great adventures and and great products in the hands of other other partners uh, so we know traditionally this has been sold offline uh, so travel agents have sold this product about 80 90 percent is still being sold uh, through offline and, and many opportunities came up. We had uh, travel agents using Tour Radar before, uh, and actually we never focused on it. Uh, and then we had a few big partners like Flight Center, actually, which probably is one of our bigger competitors, also reach out to us and say, hey, how can we work together? And, and I think it was also being pushed by a few of our partners saying, hey, Tour Radar has the best technology in this space, let's try and do something there. So, so yeah, we, we basically have built out our API now. Uh, where partners can, can take that, get one API, 2,500 operators, 50,000 adventures, uh, and actually be able to sell that product uh, in, in their own way. So uh, we also uh, saw an opportunity that uh, the likes of Shopify and Etsy uh, also did uh, prior to the pandemic and also during the pandemic in terms of giving a voice to small and medium-sized businesses of them selling online. Uh, we know that payments are a big problem. Uh, communication, messaging, email, CRM, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and that's something that we're also, as part of our ecosystem building out, uh, in is this shop functionality where SMEs will be out, so small operators. So this is in, like private tours as a new product? or That's also, yeah, for sure. So uh, we built during the pandemic the, the capability for private and tailor-made uh, adventures. Uh, and that's actually now, uh, we're seeing that grow uh, really nicely, a bit to the smaller group stuff, people wanting to travel in their own, own bubble. Uh, and we're even seeing, we call them organizers, uh, and it could be an organizer of a, a team offsite, like a retreat for uh, workplaces, or it could be, an example we had was a Facebook group of 5,000 members 
the admin put together a trip for six, like 30 or 60 people to go to Greece. Uh, and so we're, we're seeing really big groups going because we also rolled out payment solutions where usually the lead passenger gets stuck with having to pay for it all <laughs> and then try and get the money back from people. I've been that part. Yeah. <laughs> and and that, that pain is a real pain that we've solved uh, where now the lead passenger can send out a link to every single person and same with a travel agent uh, where they can actually get the customer putting their own credit card in so it's all responsible for that individual rather than the lead passenger. Uh, so it's really been about how do we bring the ecosystem together, put these great products in the hands of third parties, so OTAs, content sites, that type of thing. And uh, we're seeing great traction also on the um, on-site travel agents, so little independent agents who have a great list of customers that they sold, uh, sell to uh, can now actually sell this product as well. Uh, and we've had, since November, over 1,000 travel agents sign up for that uh, and seeing some really good traction on that at the moment. So. Okay, so there's a, a little bit to unpack there. So the, you have the adventure booking system, and so the flight center, if they want to get access to the Wonder Woman tour, they can go through Tour Radar and now get it, which that's what's new. Right. Yes, so they have an API connected to their, their system, so mm -hmm. it's called Helio, I believe, uh, and then the, the travel advisor sitting in the shop can just call from their home screen and actually say, I'd like to book the Wonder Woman trip, uh, and then we communicate via the API with TTC, and it all just basically gets uh, plugged into the system. Uh, so we're effectively the, the, the plumbing or the, the GDS of, of this type of product. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so Skiff Research did a multi-day tour uh, report, so I'm, I'm cribbing from that. But my understanding is that when you were mentioning like the private tour, there's been in the past uh, decade, a decade ago, it would be much more common. You'd have an in-destination, you'd have local uh, tour operators who actually do multi handle the operations. And then in market for the retail sales, you have different people who are helping the, to, to source the customers. But now, thanks to using Tour Radar, you can sort of have the local wholesalers would be able to directly reach their market. Is that How close is that? A bit of both. So we definitely see uh, the bigger tour companies, like the global ones, they have their local ground operators that they go through. Uh, some own them, uh, some use uh, third parties. And we are seeing DMCs, so directly coming on DMCs are direct destination, destination uh, management marketing companies. Management yeah. companies. So the ones who actually are running the, the trips on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so they're actually coming on because they can actually offer the, the product. They can't offer the same product that they probably offered to someone else. Uh, but they, they see an opportunity there. And, and because of the, the social proof we provide, uh, they can get reviews from customers and that sort of thing, so they can actually start to, to build a presence in the marketplace as well. So, yeah. um, that's interesting because it's sort of like, so 20 some years ago, you would have like the travel agent uh, was bundling the trip and then Expedient Booking, who we heard from earlier on stage, they sort of unbundled the trip and now through the technology, personalization and skill, we're, we're now rebuilding it. But the suppliers have to get much savvier at tech for that to happen. They have to be able to be able to do real-time inventory and connect. And your business-to-business -business offering is, is like a piece of that puzzle to, to get forward. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So I think the, the unbundling definitely has happened. I mean, that's been driving uh, for the last 20 years. Uh, with what uh, Ulla mentioned of the benefits of this style of travel, uh, rebundling where the simplicity of, of a very complex journey over 7, 12, 15 days is all taken care of. And so, so yeah, I, I kind of, uh, on, on the mega trend of unbundling this year, I kind of call a little bit of BS on that, uh, just personally <laughs> from my side. But right. I, I think it's really about the, this will be about simplicity and the customer wants uh, simplicity. And, and yes, our, our system, uh, we provide instant bookability so that if you actually click and put your credit card in, it's instantly booked because we have direct connections to the APIs of a lot of these providers. So, and that's a, uh, an advancement that just five, 10 years ago just wasn't there. Uh, you had to wait 48 hours for a confirmation. Uh, and it's really trying to now have an API that an Expedia or Priceline, whoever it is, would want to take and actually get that instant confirmation to be able to potentially package that up with flights and other, other uh, ancillaries as well. Yeah. So Ulo, we have a question from the audience for you about the Travel Corporation. Um, what's the update in regard to your refreshing? Will you be overhauling your product range or simply adding uh, more fresh product to it? Yeah, great question. And it, 
that is something we, we constantly and always do. We've got a, I call it a process of continuous improvement. We were never going to, you know, sit still and say everything is wonderful, things are amazing. We're always looking for new opportunities and new ways. But obviously, at the end of the day, what is driving it is what is right for the consumer. At the, if it's not right for the consumer, it doesn't matter how much we think it is amazing, it has to work for, for our guests. And right now, we're seeing some really interesting trends. And, they're interesting, but they're not surprising. You know, we, we saw earlier when, when, when Gerd pre presented all of the, the money that people haven't spent in the last few years. We are seeing people, you know, buying longer trips. They're, you know, again, they're taking their dream vacation. They are adding the Orient Express to their lux luxury goal journey. So it's really about those bucket list trips. And I've always wanted to do this. I've been sitting at home for two years, and I'm going, going to do it now. So Are the bookings actually happening? So do you have, like, for 2022? Because you don't have, you don't have uh, some, some source markets. Maybe Russia is not delivering, having travelers in Europe this year. Maybe China is not doing it. Germany's economy might be struggling a little bit more than was expected. Like, how, how are bookings and the forecast for this year? Yeah. I mean, from, from a TTC perspective, our biggest source markets are all of the English-speaking countries. Okay. And thankfully, obviously, the, the Americans can't wait to travel, and they are traveling. And they were the first ones to start traveling again in, in 2021, right? Mm -hmm. And Australia's borders are finally open again. So those are really our key, key big source markets. So yes, people are booking. Obviously, Eastern Europe, you know, not, not a surprise, is not, you know, is not really trending right now. But looking at Western Europe, you're Italy, you're Spain, France, Portugal, UK, Iceland are all, are all doing really well. And we also know that we ran hundreds of trips last year. We know we've moved from the theoretical, yeah, travel will come back. Actually, travel has come back, and we can actually operate really well in this new world, or I guess have amazing experiences with us taking all of the complexity out of it. So, and we've obviously had a ton of social media from the trips that we, we, we ran last year, and that's, that's given the consumers for, for the confidence. Okay. We have a question from Rud. How do you design for experiences for a group of diverse users, for example, those with disabilities? Mm -hmm. Great question. Not an easy one to answer. Obviously, we we try to, to cater for absolutely diverse users, but there are you know, certain you know, destination complexities. Think of Venice. If you, if you are a wheelchair user and, and, and are traveling Venice, it is not going to be easy. But at the same time, if somebody you know, with, a special, with special needs talks to us in, in advance, we can help and guide them on which of our many, many trips might be more suitable for them and advise them. And we would obviously request you know, um, accessible rooms and, and all the rest of it. But you, especially traveling in Europe, all of our cities are you know, centuries old and cobblestones, stairs, and, and it, it is not easy. But again, having open communication, talking to us um, ahead of time, obviously allows us to facilitate that and, and to give, give advice on, on what, what is the art of the possible. Okay. Another, another audience question about what the impact of virtual reality experiences may have on the tour operator sector. So there's two ways of thinking of this. One is that customers uh, might want to use VR as a way to explore what kind of tour offerings there are out there. But on the other hand, it is a kind of competition, you know, real world versus virtual. So how does TTC look at it? I think if we look back at the last two years, we were all forced to be stuck in this virtual world. <laughs> and I think we can all relate to how wonderful is it to actually be at an in-person event. I was saying to you earlier, I haven't been back to London in two years. I had my first in-person meetings with a number of London team members yesterday. And of course, we've spoken hundreds of times over teams. It is not the same thing. So I think we're all starved for that human connection. And in all honesty, I'm, I really feel that the virtual reality, yes, it is an important part, but I'm, it cannot make up for that real human connection, the smell, the sense, the taste of actually being in the destination. Okay. So Travis, I was wondering a bit, there has been a lot of money pouring into the, the uh, multi-day sector. Uh, you mentioned like with the private tours product, uh, that sort of overlaps with things that Tourlane is offering, Evanios is offering. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to hear early, later today from Get Your Guide, which focuses on single day experiences. And we heard earlier from Expedia and Booking. Mm -hmm. How do you see other players and competitions sort of coming into the multi-day space? Yeah, I think there's 
quite a few players coming in, but staying in fairly distinct like swimming lanes, basically. Like, so if you look at Get Your Guide and Kluke and Viator, they're all battling it out for that uh, in destination, attraction, activity, so two, three hour type experiences. And there's a lot of money being pumped in there, so they're all uh, very cutthroat in terms of that competition. So I think it's, it's very uh, challenging for them to be able to look sideways and actually look at other verticals. So, and then if you talk about uh, the likes of Tourlane and Evanios, they're very much uh, focused around kind of the tailor-made experience. So all the stuff that uh, the likes of TTC and G-Adventures and Intrepid and, and all these uh, companies are selling, these schedule itineraries, basically no one's really touching that. Uh, and we've been the only one really leading that. And I think that combination that we tried to build during the pandemic of offering tailor-made and private as well as the group and scheduled is where we think the sweet spot is because a customer actually doesn't care. Like sometimes I want to do something with a group because I'd have no friends who want to go with me. I just want to travel and I want to get out. Uh, and then other times I want to do it with my family or with a group of friends. So, and they should have one place that they can go and actually do that. Um, so, so we see uh, a, f a bit of competition coming in, um, but we don't sort of see anyone coming into sort of the way that we've approached it. Uh, and with our API and how we've uh, tried to make it so accessible for other players, I mean, we want to have conversations with the Get Your Guides, the Klukes, the Viators of the world to say, hey, why don't you do a multi-day through us? Uh, and then they can actually package it up how they like. Um, but all that contracting, all those commercials, it's very difficult. It takes a lot of effort to do that. Yeah. And, and your system allows a provider to decide, I want to have this kind of commercial relationship with this channel and this kind of, uh, these kind of terms with this other channel as Correct. you're toggling through. Yep. Exactly. So, so Ulo, we heard from my colleague Wouter from Skiff Research earlier. He was talking about one of his points was sustainability. And a lot of uh, consumers are not yet spending on it, but the anticipation, there is a long, just a strong preference for it. TTC has a commitment on sustainability. What is, I know it's been for a couple of years, what is new like in your sustainability efforts? So as you said, I mean, for us, this isn't the new buzzword. We've been, you know, we founded our Red Light Foundation over 15 years ago. So we, we, we are very strong believers in it. But during the pandemic, we actually doubled down on our sustainability efforts and launched our five year how we tread right sustainability strategy. And it is you know, publicly available on TTC.com. It's got 11 very distinct goals. That we've set ourselves as, as an organization to give you one example. You know, one of the goals is to be carbon neutral by, by 2030 across all of our TTC brands. Another one, um, one that is very close to my heart is our commitment of having at least one make travel matter experience on 50% of, of all of TTC's itineraries by 2025. Well, of what kind of experience? The make travel so better experience. The make yes. travel mm -hmm. matter experience. Matter, and sorry. essentially, it is, it is an immersive experience that supports the local community in, in very simplistic terms. But we use an assessment tool which has been validated by external sustainability professionals. But just to bring it to, li to, to life a little bit, Picture yourself in the south of Spain, in Seville, the city of Flamenco. You obviously want to see, yeah, want to experience Flamenco, but we don't, we wouldn't just take you to a regular Flamenco show. We actually visit a local Flamenco foundation, the Cristina Herrera Foundation. It's a Flamenco school. Our guests get to, to meet some of the students. They have a bit of a flamenco dance class if they wish. If they don't want to participate, they sit down and, and, and watch it. And after that, they have a um, uh, uh, take their front, front row seats to a performance. It's a very small, intimate venue. It's not a touristy venue at all, but it is a very deep and rich experience. And we are supporting the local foundation who's keeping the tradition alive. Mm -hmm. And I think that is just one of the examples of the win-win-wins we can create because our guests will have a deeper and more meaningful experience. We are supporting the local foundation and at the end of the day, it's a win for the company as well. So that's really you know, the three, 360 de degree view we'd like to take and how we can, how we do believe travel can and needs to be you know, a force for good and support to local communities. That's a wonderful point to end on. Thank you, Ula. Thank you, Travis, very much sure. for this. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you.